All right, so the way that we're going to section this off, I look at the parietal ridge uh, as kind of a starting point. I also look at the recession point in the head as well. So I'll go across here. I'm going to go just below the recession point. Now, why do I want to kind of section at this, at this curve of the head? Well, that's where the head will start to shift over. And when the hair starts to fall, that's where it starts to pile up and get the heaviest. So as I work through his haircut, I want to separate top and bottom. And then this is kind of an area where Matt was complaining about as well, because it starts to wing and flip out. So what I'll do is I'll cut into that just a little bit to help soften it. You got to focus on that calic area to make sure that as I'm sectioning it, all this is kind of falling in natural fall and I'll work around that. So I'll show you guys that in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to comb the hair back just like this. And we're going to start working diagonal back partings all the way through. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be point cutting into his hair. My finger angle will mimic the parting. I'm going to come through and I'm just going to soften and take off about a half an inch of hair. And my elevation will go up right around the top edge of this. And the reason I start to raise my elevation is because I want to soften that weight line that's going to happen. If I don't elevate it and I just cut a straight line across like this, it's going to get super heavy up there, which is what it's already doing naturally. So what happened with Matt's hair here is that he's just been growing out a regular haircut. A regular haircut gets clippered here and it's short and it's all pretty much the same length or tapers and gets a little bit heavier with a clipper cut up at this top area. So when that grows out, you end up with a heavy kind of graduated feel, which then turns a little helmety or mushroomy on the kind of on the end back end of that. So what we're doing is we're just making that adjustment of cutting it into layers first and second, shifting my finger angle as I work towards the top of this section to then layer it instead of graduate it. Now, the other thing with Matt's hair is that it gets a little fluffier feeling when it starts to dry. So as I go in and cut, instead of cutting a blunt line, which will just make it fluffier, I'm actually going in and uh, cutting a jagged line so that it'll lay nice and soft. So I haven't cut the nape area yet. I'm going to move to the opposite side, work my way back to this point, and then I'll go through the nape. So now this whole area all through here is nice and light before it was kind of poofing out. Now the heaviness is kind of on the bottom. What I want to do is just go in and soften it a little bit. So I'm going to use the tri razor for this part. And this area is where we want to work in. We want it to be nice and light because this is obviously the part that's going to get long the fastest. You don't want it to be like a tail or a mullet. Vertical section, I can see up above where I cut into it. And I'm just going to softly kind of work through. This will also make it fall nice and soft. So again, we cut the nape, we work those layers through, then we've got the connection of these two sections. If it feels a little bit thick or appears to be a little bit thick, then I go in, texture 25, and I just slide mid shaft to ends, just remove a little extra weight and blend those two sections together. Then I'll go through and blow it dry, see how much weight we've taken out and how much weight we still need to remove. This is a texturizing scissor. The reason I like this one is this one has a blade at the bottom. So what I do is I use that blade to kind of guide through the hair and I'll cut these kind of diagonal slices through it. What that's going to do is again, remove some weight from this haircut and just soften it. So what I like is that right now we don't have a huge buildup of weight. You can see the texture and the layers. That's kind of what we want. We don't want that helmet look. We want to flatten all this out. So just going in using the texturizing scissor at a diagonal to work through this nape area and kind of separate it a little bit. All right, so now I'm moving through the top, guys. I do not want to cut really any length off the top because that's the part that it is going to need to grow. But at the same time, it's going to be the heaviest part, too. So I want to lighten it up around the edges, a lot of point cutting and just working through it. Also, this fringe that kind of comes across in the front with Matt here. It gets super thick right in this area. So that's where I want to cut into it. So a couple different things I'm going to do. I'm going to work through the top point cutting. And then when I get to the front, I'm going to actually section it away and work through it. So vertical section through the top, point cut, cross. Again, keep that length. So I come across the top. 
and I section and I just let a little bit down at a time. What that do for me is just kind of let me work each section and make sure I figure out exactly where it feels heavy. So I'm going in here, a little point cutting, and then I let it fall back and I see how is it laying. Now it's laying nice and soft. So I just continue that all the way through, almost cutting like a round section, opening up his face a little bit, just through here, cut into it. Now look at this gap here. This is another thing that happens when you're growing out a shorter haircut. It takes on the form of the head shape. So where the temple kind of comes here, there's a disconnect on the fringe. So I'm gonna work into that. So I'll actually take that away as I'm cutting in and point cutting this because I want this from the, for the recession point down, I want that to fall nice. I don't want to take any length off of that fringe area. So the fringe will do last. So now we're in the fringe area. This is really heavy right here. So I'm going to come across, bring this section over to me. I'm going to start cutting my line across the front. But what I want to do is I want to clean up around the edges first, uh, and then we'll go back and shampoo them. So, and I don't want to take length off here, but I just want to clean up the sideburn area, make sure it all blends, and then we'll do the same thing in the back nape. So right here, just kind of start working those lines in. I don't take the length right away. Comb that forward, work up. Then when I get it there, then I can take my comb, put it under. Tighten up that sideburn. Now in the back nape, I can lift up his hair and I'll just kind of work the clipper or the trimmer up underneath. I still want to keep this kind of fringier look. I just want to cut those little kind of loose curlier hairs underneath. Now that I've shampooed him, kind of gotten all the loose hairs out, I'm in control of the hair at this point. So now I can kind of take a look again at that outer perimeter and just see where we're at. Then we'll start to style it and do any more cutting that we need to do. The other thing that I like to do is because his ears, like I don't want to cut them out too much, but I do want to tighten up the area around the ears a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take a triangle out from where the ear is and that's where I'm going to tighten things up. We'll come across here, section down like that, and then I'll section back off of the ear as well. And then this is the area that I'll assess. What I want to do is just take some of this hair. I'm just going to move a little bit tighter. So almost like concave in a way, just collapsing right above the ear and just allowing some of that length to play into it. That way it won't get bushy real quick, but you still have your length. My tip of my finger here towards my body will cut a little shorter towards the interior. This is a good technique for pixie cuts as well. So right here in the temple area, I see a little extra length. And what I want to do is I kind of want to connect. This is the fringe here. And it comes down and goes up a little bit. So what I want to do is just kind of connect in some of these pieces. So I can see where that goes up, slide my scissor up. And I'll just disconnect a couple of these pieces to go in and connect to the rest of the cut. Just little details that I like to work in there because I feel like it brings everything together. So the last bit before we blow it dry is this nape area. So this to me, when I was cutting into it, just got a little fuzzy and doesn't need to be this long at this point. So I'm just gonna take just the edge of it off, take a little extra off the back nape area, a little steady grip. I'm gonna put this throughout his hair and that'll help me with that kind of poofiness that can happen with longer men's hair. So that'll help control it a little bit, but obviously the cut at this point kind of controlled that as well. So like the biggest challenges he was having was the bulkiness here. So you can see how it's laying a lot flatter. Um, but then as we pull this fringe over, that's something I definitely want to work on now. You see the side profile, we got a little bit longer length, but then up through here, this is all layered, kind of textured through. So I'm going to do a little bit more point cutting. So this is the hardest part about this cut, guys, is that it's not, I mean, it's, I can give you tips to cutting, but it's going to be different with everybody that you cut. 
So, so he's gonna wear it forward. If he wore it back, so I just kind of pushed it around. The biggest thing for me is that Matt is, has an easier time doing his hair when he leaves me, right? You'll see me push his hair kind of all over the place where I think he might push it and wear it. And then that way I can kind of determine at that point if he's gonna have a hard time or not. 